the supreme personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, because you were never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most confidential knowledge and realization, knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It's the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it's the perfection of religion. It is everlasting, and it is joyfully performed. Those who are not faithful in this devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of enemies. Therefore, they return to the path of birth and death in this material world. By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. And yet, everything that is created does not rest in me. Behold my mystic opulence. Although I am the maintainer of all living entities, and although I am everywhere, I am not part of this cosmic manifestation, for myself is the very source of creation. Understand that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests, as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests always in the sky, all created beings rest in me. O son of Kunti, at the end of the millennium, all material manifestations enter into my nature, and at the beginning of another millennium, by my potency, I can create them again. The whole cosmic order is under me. Under my will, it is automatically manifested again and again, and under my will, it is annihilated at the end. Odananya. All this work cannot bind me. I am ever detached from all these material activities, seated as though neutral. This material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O Sano Kunti, producing all moving and non-moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. Fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature as the Supreme Lord of all that means. Those who are thus bewildered are attracted by demonic and atheistic views. In that deluded condition, their hopes for liberation, their fruitive activities, and their culture of knowledge are all defeated. O son of Pritha, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Always chanting my glories, endeavoring with great determination, bowing down before me, these great souls perpetually worship me with devotion. Others who engage in sacrifice by the cultivation of knowledge worship in the Supreme Lord as one without a second, as diverse in many and in the universal form. But it is I who am the ritual, I the sacrifice, the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant. I am the butter and the fire and the offering. I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support and the grandsire. I am the object of knowledge and the purifier and the symbol of I am also the Rig, the Sama and the Ayurvedas. I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the most dear friend. I am the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place, and the eternal sea. O Arjuna, I give heat and I withhold and send forth the rain. I am immortality and I am also death personified. Both spirit and matter are in me. Those who study the Vedas and drink the Soma juice, seeking the heavenly planets, worship me indirectly. Purified of sinful reactions, they take birth on the pious heavenly planets of Indra, where they enjoy godly delights. When they have thus enjoyed vastly, vast heavenly sense pleasure and the results of their pious activities are exhausted, they return to this mortal planet again. Those who seek sense enjoyment, enjoyment by adhering to the principles of the three Vedas achieve only repeated birth and death. But those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack, and I preserve what they have. Those who are devotees of other gods and who worship them with faith and actually with faith actually worship only me, O son of Kunti, but they do so in a wrong way. I am the only enjoyer and master of all sacrifices. Therefore, those who do not recognize my true transcendental nature fall down. Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or water, I will accept it. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that, O San Kunti, as an offering to me. In this way, you will be free from bondage to work and its auspicious and inauspicious results. With your mind fixed on me in this principle of renunciation, you will be liberated and come to me. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all, but whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. Even if one commits the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly, because he is properly situated in his determination. He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace, O son of Pinti, declare boldly that my devotee never perishes. O son of Pritha, those who take shelter in me, although 
though they be of lower birth, women by shias merchants and sudras workers, can attain the supreme destination. How much more of the, how much more this is so of the righteous brahmanas, devotees and the saintly kings? Therefore, having come to me, come to this temporary miserable world, engage in loving service unto me. Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Become my devotee. Offer obeisances to me and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. Chapter 10, Chapter 11, Priya, Chapter 12, Tanapati Prabhu, Chapter 13, Snehamai, Chapter 14, Location, Mabhusu. So, Chapter